Hello and hi everyone. Let's talk about on how we can change the Cartesian form of a complex number into its polar form or also known as the modulus argument form. So we, before we go further, let's talk a little bit about what we call as the Argon diagram. Argon diagram. So uh, Argon diagram is, is just like our our x y plane but the the different the, the slight different is the axis that it present so for x axis or the horizontal axis it just is just for the the real part of our complex number and for the vertical axis the y axis is just for the the imaginary part of our complex number so uh, an argon diagram it's used to to plot or to locate our complex number. So let's have a look at, on this example. So we have Z1, we have Z2, we also have Z3 and Z4. So let's try to locate them in using our argon diagram. So for Z1 over here, we have 3 plus 4i. What does it mean by that? So we have 3 units for our real axis so we have we, we move to the right of uh, of our argon diagram and we move four units in our imaginary part so so z1 is located somewhere here so this is your z1 from the origin so uh, what about z2 z2 we move negative one so we move to the left one unit in our real part real part of our real axis and we have we move seven unit up for our imaginary part so we we have something like this this one for z2 so something like this what about z3 z3 is negative 5 and negative 2 it is somehow we can also see this negative 5 negative 2 as the x and y or the, the coordinates of our point so we have negative 5 for x and negative 2 for y so so it is somewhere somewhere here so negative 2 for real part and negative 5 for imaginary part is somewhere here so this is your z3 And for the Z4, we have 5, negative 1. So we have 5, negative 1, somewhere here. So this is your Z4. So in general, in general, in general, let's say I have Z is equal to X plus YI. So uh, we assume that that it's just in the first quadrant. So we have x, we have x unit for the real part and y unit on the imaginary part. So this is our z. So this is our x unit. X unit is here, and we have y y unit here y unit up and x unit to the right so we will see this 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 we will see that we have the 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 right angle triangle here and for now we can we can talk about our main idea here that is the modulus the modulus and also the argument of z argument of z so when we talk about the modulus of z or denoted by this symbol or also the, the small r it's just the length of our complex number here from the origin until up to our point here so i will mark this with, with black ink pen so we have r over here so modulus of z is also denoted as r 
small r so it's just the the length of our complex number and we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find r so we just apply the Pythagoras theorem by Pythagoras theorem we have we have x squared we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared so r is just the the third it's just the third of the x squared plus y squared so we use the we just apply directly the the pythagoras theorem now what about the argument of z so argument of z is just the the angle theta the angle theta measured from the the positive real part or real axis of our argon diagram up to our line here our line or from from zero or from origin to our point here so this is our argument theta so basically basically argument is just the angle the fancy name of the theta of theta or our angle and it's measured from from the positive real at this and it takes the value from negative pi up to positive pi or in in degree we have negative 180 till 180 so it's either anti-clockwise rotation or clockwise rotation up to 180 degree so now we have our diagram here we have our um, right angle triangle here and our definition of the the argument and also the modulus and from for this one we also can have tan theta so tan theta tan theta is just the opposite so opposite over adjacent over here so we have y over x so theta or our angle also known as the, our argument is just the octan octan of the ratio of y and x so now how can we change our cartesian form into the polar form so from the cartesian form we have z is equal to x plus y i and i i redraw our right angle triangle x y r and theta so for for referring by referring this this right angle triangle here and by our knowledge about our basic trigonometry uh, ratio we have sine theta is equal to y over r the opposite of a hypotenuse and we also have we also have cos theta is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse so x over r so now so now if we if we making y and x as the subject what we got here what we get here should be so y is just equal to r sine theta and for this one we will have x is just equal to r cos theta so now we substitute x and y into our cartesian form here what should we get we will have we will have x is equal to r cos theta so r cos theta plus and y is r sine theta so so r sine theta i sorry about about this writing but but you know what i mean and then if we can factorize 
R over here. So we will have R cos theta plus sin theta i. So this is this is what we showed what we shown you this before at the beginning of the video. So this is what we call as the 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 modulus argument form. So how how it relates to the to the Cartesian form. So these are cos theta plus sin theta i is what we call as the polar form of a complex number also known as the modulus argument form. So hope this video helps you in understanding the, the, the idea behind the, 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 the formula of modulus argument form. Till next time, bye bye.